and welcome to the 2015 Collier County Middle School Scholar Bowl Debate Tournament. I would like to welcome our audience here at the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Administration Center and also our audience watching us on the Education Channel. This is the third televised Collier County Middle School debate finale. I am Ashley Cook, the Collier County Public Schools Coordinator of Academic Competitions. It is my pleasure to be here today, and I'm looking forward to being a judge for your match. The debate program is designed to recognize and challenge Collier County's academically talented middle school students. Each team competes to persuade a panel of citizen judges to vote for its side of the resolution. This is done through a series of speeches and crossfires that are also known as debates. We use the public forum debate format. The public forum debate format has each team develop both a pro and con case. To support their side of the case, students use effective persuasion evidence, which may include a mix of facts, statistics, expert quotations, studies, and polls. Students may also include relevant real life examples, anecdotes, analogies, and personal experiences. Then it is up to the judges to simply decide, disregarding all previous ideas and notions about the subject, which side was, in the end, the most persuasive. During the entire process, this program helps students practice and focus on important education and life skills. They are required to pull key ideas and details from texts, write and deliver arguments to support claims, integrate and evaluate information orally, evaluate a speaker's point of view, and adapt speech to a variety of communication tasks. Our other goals include promoting rigor, confidence, presentation skills, higher order thinking ability, and academic fun. I would also like to welcome our teams and congratulate them for their hard work and dedication that helped them to reach today's finale. This year we had 10 Collier County Public um, Middle Schools participating in our debate program. The students have been practicing with their amazing coaches all year. This morning, the top four teams from the pra practice match this year competed in two more matches. Those were East Naples Middle, North Naples Middle, Oak Ridge Middle, and Pine Ridge Middle. The top two teams from those matches were invited back to compete now in this finale. Let's go ahead and meet our two teams who will be participating for uh, first and second place district wide. We will start with our team from East Naples Middle. I would like to introduce you to the coach, Jorge Nieves Chevalier. All right, let's introduce the East Naples Middle School debate team. Here I have Anna Traylor. She is an eighth grader who has also competed in Scholar Bowl, and this is her first year with debate. I have Logan Zitai, who has also competed in Scholar Bowl. This is his second year with our debate team. He is a seventh grader. And I have Taylor Brewer, who is an eighth grader, has done track, and she has competed in debate for two years. Okay, great, thank you very much. Our second team is from North Naples Middle School. They were coached by Kathleen Piper. I'm proud to oh. uh, introduce. Oh, yeah, I need a microphone. <laughs> proud to introduce, this is Kylie Campbell. She's a sixth grader. This is her first year in debate. She is also an active member of our school's student council. We have Cynthia Paget. She is a seventh grader. It is her first year on debate, and she is very active in track and other sports activities. And we have Lexi Piper. This is her third year in debate. And outside of school, she enjoys acting. OK, thank you very much. Um, good luck to both of our teams. Now let's meet the judges for this match. They will introduce themselves and let you know if they're representing any organizations. Theron Trimble, representing the Florida Council for the Social Studies. Kathy Ryan, retired Collier County educator, representing the American Association of University of Women. Laura Perry, gifted curriculum specialist, advanced studies and gifted learners department for Collier County Public Schools. I'll let you know we have the best judges, the best volunteers um, in our program, so thank you all for being here. As we begin our match, I would like to give you a quick overview of what to expect. The three debaters from each team will take turns giving a speech and then participating in a crossfire. We then move to the summary rebuttal speeches and the grand crossfire, which includes all students. The final focus will end the debate as a debater from each team will sum up the team's position. 
For this final match, the students will be debating this resolution. Resolved, with current levels of sustainable practices, the future of water in the United States is secure. Students, do you have any questions before we begin? Okay, um, just before the match started, we um, conducted a coin toss which decides which team will be pro, which will be con, which will be first, or which will be second. That determined that East Naples Middle will take the pro stance and North Naples Middle will take the con stance. It also determined that East Naples Middle will speak first and North Naples Middle will speak second. Again, the resolution resolved with current levels of sustainable practices the future of water in the United States is secure. Okay, I'll give you a moment to get ready, um, teams, and then I'll, I'll turn the podium over to you. Again, best of luck. Constructive speech, first speaker, Team A, three minutes. Hello, my name is Anna Chollor and I'm representing East Naples Middle School. I believe that with current levels of sustainable practices, the future water in the United States is secure. According to drinktap.org, water conserving fixtures installed in the United States households in 1998 alone have saved 44 million gallons of water every day. These new fixtures, such as faucets, shower heads, toilets, dishwashers, and clothes washers, say more than half of the water old, model, old models used previously. One program that contributes greatly to this household water conservation is WaterSense. Even bigger than the faucets and household appliances, we have no more dust bowl effect in the Midwestern regions. We have more crops and better irrigation systems. These irrigation levels haven't been so low since 1965. These irrigation systems have improved so much, in fact, that with that the withdrawals improved from 1965 to 2005, and even in 2013, we had 13% less withdrawals than from 2005. Even in other categories where we use withdrawals, they've been at an all-time low since 1970. We, we wouldn't see these levels if the sustainable practices we've been using aren't working. With so much improvement, it is only logically working, and with a 13% improvement in eight years alone, we're doing something right. There are other ways we are conserving water besides high efficiency devices. Why conserve water you don't need to use? This is an idea behind xeriscaping. Xeriscaping is an idea that originated in Colorado and uses planting and arranging plants that don't need as much or as conventional irrigation. Xeriscaping uses these drought ready plants to be able to withstand periods of less water and to more efficiently use the water they are already given. A lot of households use half their water for lawn and plant maintenance. By using xeriscaping, we are using a lot less water in households and thus conserving water by default. Xeriscaping is becoming more and more popular in the drought infested states, especially California. Recently, California has taken many measures to conserve water and the ones that have already taken effect are extremely effective at, using their, at doing their job. In California, they have tiered water pricing. This means that the more water someone uses, the more it costs them. People realize that that leaky shower head uses water and costs them money, and they fix that faucet, saving water and money at the same time. More things that have been happening in California is that they, use, that they issued civilian restrictions of 25% of what they used in 2013 to be conserved. This restriction alone can lead to 1.3 million acre feet of water conserved. San Jose Water Company is even starting mandatory water rationing in San Jose. Another restriction that is taking place is California mandating that water companies with over 3,000 connections have to conserve a certain percentage of their water. This percentage can be between 8 and 36 percent, and companies that don't comply can pay a fee of up to $10,000 per day. The government in California is passing these restrictions, and they're working. Again, we're doing something right. All of these programs are working. Time. Thank you for your time. Constructive speech, first speaker, Team B, three minutes. Hello, my name is Kyla Campbell, and I will be re representing North Naples Middle School on the con side of this de debate. I strongly believe that the future of water in the U.S., with the current levels of sustainable practices, is not secure. Leonardo da Vinci once said, water is the driving force of all nature, water. 
Water is one of the most important substances in our survival. Then why don't we care for it? Why don't we protect this precious substance that has been referred to as liquid gold? Because of the lack of effort we're putting into keeping our water pure, the future of the water in the United States is not secure. Cities all over the U.S. have been getting in trouble with water, and it's not difficult to see why. The water sources they depend on, rivers, lakes, and aquifers, have for decades been heavily used for irrigated agriculture. Since 1950, the consumption of water nationally for irrigation has tripled in volume, a trend that played a large role in enabling food production to more than double over the same period. Water stripped cities are trying to expand in places where most of the water is already being consumed by irrigated agriculture. In fact, more than 90% of the water being consumed from those shared water sources is gone, is gone to growing crops. In many ba basins, a reduction of agriculture water consumption of just 20 to 15 to 20% can yield massive volumes of water that can be saved for other uses. For example, if not adopted nationally, this level of reduction in agricultural water consumption would make more water available than all the water consumed in cities and industries today. We need to be directing our water to places that need it more. We need to be using our water on things that really matter so we still have some for the future and so that we have a stable future full of water. Opponents may argue that the water conservation efforts did help ease the timing of water expansions. However, they only helped ease the timing to a certain extent. These typical water development patterns pose significant problems from a sustainability perspective, as it is usually associated with serious negative ecological and social impacts and lacking cost effectiveness. The heavy exploitation of freshwater sources, a result of growing urban demands on top of heavy agricultural use has caused severe damage to freshwater ecosystems, impaired the ability of ecosystems to provide services to people, and created health problems in many regions. In addition, groundwater depletion has led to increased electricity costs for pumping the water from ever-increasing depths. When cities extend their reach into other rivers or aquifers to access water supply, they spread negative impacts over great distances. Energy-intensive technologies such as recycling and detoxification are expensive, resulting in higher water bills for consumers, as well as increased carbon emissions that accelerate our climate change. This just proves that we are wasting our water supply. In conclusion, if we don't get our act together, we are not going to have a secure future of water in the United States. We are overusing what is now considered a privilege. We are destroying our future with water. Every day when we waste water, we take a step down the mountain towards a plentiful future. Leonardo da Vinci once said, water is the driving force of all nature. We are slowing down that driving force. If we don't improve our water practices, that driving force will soon be gone forever. Thank you for your time. Can we have 30 seconds of prep time? 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds is up. Crossfire, first speakers from both teams. Um, I would want, oh. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, you said that irrigation has gone up three, three times? Mm, tripled in volume, yes. Can you give me your source for that? Um, I have sources from um, Tom Sheehy, Acting Secretary of the California State, Brian Richter of the Nature Conservancy, um, and the University of Virginia. Does it say that it was in specific states or all over the United States? Um, it says just in, um, it says all over the U.S. And you keep talking about California, but that's just one state. We need all these programs to go nationally, and how will those go nationally eventually? They will go nationally because in California they bottle water. And so if they bottle water there, it depletes it. So if they move it to the east, they use less. Well, you also said that we are doing fine for irrig irrigated crops, but we, we are giving, aren't we giving too much to irrigated crops for other uses that would be more practical? Actually, um, our irrigation use has gone down over two times as much since 1965. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you said that, um, that we don't need to conserve water that we don't need, but we need all the water we can get. Zero escaping doesn't use as much water, and so we don't need to conserve what's wasted. Um, you said something about climate change and uh, CO2 emissions. How does yeah. that have to deal with water? Well, 
because of the energy intensive technologies such as recycling, recycling and detoxification are expensive, they result in higher water bills and those um, energy intensive technologies can cause um, carbon emissions that accelerate How climate How expensive change. is it exactly? What? How expensive is it? Um, it's, um, I do not know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, so if you don't know how expensive it is, how is it costing water bills to cost more? Because the, um, such as recycling and detoxification, they, I found my sites from, um, I had an interview with Brian Richter and he talked about how they were tripling the price of what they usually are. Um, you said we aren't going to last. Time. Constructive speech, second speaker, team A, three minutes. Hello, my name is Logan Zitai. I'm from East Naples Middle School, and I strongly believe that with the practices today, the water in the United States will last us. According to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA for short, managing the supply and availability of water is one of the most critical natural resource issues facing the United States and the world. Homes use more than half publicly supplied water in the United States, which, significant, which is significantly more used than either business or industry. To help American homes and businesses with, with the efficient use of their water, the EPA has invented a, pr a program called WaterSense, a partnership program. By offering simple ways to reduce water use through water-efficient product choices with no sacrifice to quality or product, or product performance, WaterSense helps Americans save water and money. Promote the value of water efficiency, provide consumers with easy ways to save water, and as both label for products and an information resource to help people use water more efficiently. Encourage innovation in manufacturing, decrease water use and reduce strain on water resource and infrastructure. The program seeks to help consumers make smart water choices that save money and maintain high environmental standards without com compromising performance. Products and services have earned water since labeled have been certified to be at least 20% more efficient than other products without sacrificing performance. Upgrading to more efficient water sense labeled products can help us save billions of gallons of water in the country every year. Something as simple as twisting on a water sense labeled aerator and upgrading to a water sense faucet could save a household 11,000 gallons of water just for the life of that faucet. In a study by the United States Geological Survey, USGS for short, water use in the United States in 2010 was estimated to be about 355 billion gallons per day, which was 13% less than in 2005. The 2010 estimates put a total withdrawals at the lowest level since 1970. Fresh water withdrawals were 306 billion gallons per day, or 86% of the total withdrawals, and saline water withdrawals were 14% of the total withdrawals. Fresh surface water and saline water, fresh surface water withdrawals, 230 billion gallons per day, were almost 15% less than in 2005. Fresh water, gro fresh groundwater withdrawals, 76 billion gallons per day, were about 4% less than in 2005. Saline surface water withdrawals were 4.5 billion gallons per day, or 2. or 24% less than 2005. With all of these amounts dropping. Since 2005, in just five years, we are saving water day after day after day. And with what we have today, we're good. Time. Thank you. Constructive speech, second speaker, Team B, three minutes. Hello, I am Cynthia Patch, and I'm representing Con for this argument. I very strongly believe the future of water in the U.S. is not secure with current levels of sustainable practices. To secure the future of our water in the U.S., we have to secure water we have to secure it now. Our water sources are limited and due to population growth, unpredictable nature, and conflicting demands for our resources, the sources are becoming even more scarce. There was 
9 million people living in the U.S. in 2014, according to the U.S. Census, but that number, number has increased. The average American family uses 300 gallons per day. According to USGS.gov, 96% of water on Earth is salt water. Nearly 70% of that fresh water is frozen in ice caps of Antarctica and Greenland. According to globalchange.umage.edge, only approximately 1% of our wa world's water is fresh and is accessible for direct human use. Only of our habits with our water are very unhealthy. We overuse. We leave the faucet on when we're brushing our teeth and during drought people water their lawns. Not only our daily habits are unhealthy for our future water, but even the ways we obtain our water are unhealthy. Many of our most important aquifers are be being overpumped, causing widespread declines in groundwater levels. Major rivers, including the Colorado River in western United States and Yellow River in China, no longer reach the sea in most years, according to a professor at Pacific Institute. Also, think about the drought in California, for instance. Everyone keeps using more and more water. Think about the future in the US. Think about having no water in the future. The most important change we can make is the way we think about the value and manage our water. Thank you. Can we have another 30 seconds prep time? Okay, 30 seconds is up. Crossfire, second speaker for both teams, two minutes. Um, you were saying that our fresh groundwater is depleting, but as I said in my speech, the fresh groundwater withdrawals were 24% less than in 2005. What is your source for that? My source for that is United States Geological Survey, USGS.gov. Also, where, um, well, where do you get your percentages? My percentages? You used a lot of them in your speech. They were all from a survey in USGS.gov. How do you know that is an efficient source? Because it's the United States Geological Survey. I do not believe yes, that the United States would lie in a survey. Yes, but there's that is surveys. Free to the public. And some people could lie on a survey. But it's the United States. It's not just some person taking a survey. Also, um, you said that people in the drought in California, they are using as much water as they want. What, as my partner said, in her speech, there's tiered water usage. So the more that you use, the more you have to pay. So I don't really think that people would want to pay more for using more water. I actually said everyone keeps using more and more as in us as a nation, not as just a state. But you were talking about California before then and talking about people in California. That was just for instance. Also in 2005, after five years, what about the past five years from 2010 to 2015? How do we know if it didn't go up since then? I'm just showing that they have gone down and they're probably continuing there. Also, you mentioned China. China doesn't have to do with the US. You were talking about the Yellow yes, River in China. Was, I was actually quoting a professor from Pacific Institute. Yes, but the Yellow River isn't in the United States. But right before that, I was talking about the Colorado River and Western Time. United States. Constructive speech, 
Third speaker, Team A, three minutes. Hello, my name is Taylor Brewer and I'm representing East Naples Middle School. I'll probably be the first to admit that the human population is messed up a couple times. What can I say, it's a problem of ours. The only thing I'm positive of is that we can solve our problems and we can start with conserving water with the same perfectly good techniques from today. WaterSense, as my partners have stated, is a program sponsored by the EPA. As you can probably guess, or at least I hope, it's a program dedicated to help saving water. And so far, it's doing a pretty good job. Did you know that they've created products that help save water even when the tap isn't on? There's now a market just for water efficient products, programs, and practices as stated by EPA.org. As EPA.org has also stated, older toilets manufactured before 1992 when the Energy Policy Act mandated water efficient toilets used up to 3.5 gallons per flush. However, when you replace these toilets with the water sense toilets, they could save up to 2 billion gallons per day. 2 billion gallons per day? This could help save an incredible amount of water, saving us enough water to last for probably the rest of our future. All you need to do is expand the use of these water saving techniques, make the common population more aware of these great things that we already have. Toilets aren't the only thing that we have that are more water efficient. WaterSense has also made it possible for faucets and appliances to save water. Did you know that faucets use more than one trillion gallons of water across the U.S. every year? WaterSense can reduce a sink's flow by 30%. If every household in the United States replaced their old faucets and faucet accessories with the WaterSense ones, we could save more than 60 billion gallons of water a year. That's enough to meet the public demand in a city the size of Miami for more than 150 days. The average washing machine uses about 41 gallons of water per load, but high efficiency water washing machines use 35 to 50% less water. A lot of water can be saved wa just by using a different toilet. Who knew? Did you know that a leaky toilet can waste 200 gallons per day? That would be as wasteful as flushing your toilet more than 50 times for absolutely no reason. Do you realize how much water we could be saving simply by repairing old leaks or replacing old shower heads or faucets with newer ones? They don't even have to be the water sense ones. Those, those couldn't hurt. It's not just inside that we can be saving water, but on the outside too. Of this 26 billion gallons of water consumed daily in the United States, approximately 7.8 billion gallons are devoted to outdoor use. You don't even have to use any fancy equipment to conserve water outdoors. According to EPA.gov, all you have to do is choose climate appropriate, drought tolerant, and native adapted species, or renaturalize your lawn or xeriscape, as my partner Anna has stated. Saving water is just as easy as that. Look, all we have to do. Time. Thank you for your time. Constructive speech, third speaker, Team B, three minutes. My name is Lexi Piper, and I'm from North Naples Middle School, and I'm debating the con side for this resolution. I strongly believe that the current levels of sustainable practice is not secure for the future of water in the United States. Sustainable practice is a policy that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I would first like to talk about something that is currently affecting the United States. The issue is the drought in California. I propose that not only are the current levels of sustainable practice not sufficient to secure the future of water, they are not even adequate to support today's needs. The security of water availability for California is so dire that the California State Water Board has been forced to revise drought regulations just last month. These measures include a statement the board released for a revised blueprint enforcing Governor Jerry Brown's executive order that Californians by next February reduce urban water use by 25% compared with the 2013 levels. This emergency revision would not be necessary if the current regulations were sufficient. In California, they have a fraction of the amount of water they had last year, Peter Gleick said, the environmental scientist from Yale, said in an interview with USA Today on regard to the drought. All bets are off on the water policy, he said. 
if the drought goes on for five, 10, or 20 years, all bets are five, 10, or 20 years, in the end, we will have no choice but to bring supply and demand back into balance. At the, and the options for new supply are very limited. We've reached the peak of water in most western watersheds, and there's no more water to be had. My opponents would argue that we already have enough to protect this precious liquid gold of life called water, when in fact, most of it is going to big businesses for processes like fracking in California every year. They waste one million gallons of fresh water for drilling oil. And the new plan set out by Governor Jerry Brown, it states nothing about cutting down on fracking. If we even sourced a fraction of the water from industrial and agricultural use to urban use, the water would be better protected. That is why I strongly believe that the current levels of sustainable practice does not secure the future of water. Thank you. Can we have 30 seconds of prep time? Okay, 30 minutes is up. Crossfire, third speakers from both teams, two minutes. Um, you were saying how we're not saving enough water per year. Do you call 60, balance, 60 billion gallons a year not enough? Well, for the whole entire United States, I don't think that's enough if people are using about 300 gallons a day of water. Where'd you get that source? Um... I got some of it from the National Geographic and the other one from the Pacific Institute. Um, uh, what, my, uh, what, what would be an average family? What was your statistic? 300, um, 300 um, gallons a day. For um, a average family? or Yeah, an average size family, 300 gallons What would an average size family be? Um, you've been g giving us some great ideas to conserve water, but um, what you would never be? said that we've used any of them. Actually, I have. I've said we've been implementing a lot of these new sources. And the thing is, we have great ideas and we have great um, techniques and practices. All we need to do, the question doesn't say that we can't um, expand our already ideas. It just says we can't create any more new ideas. We have some really amazing ideas. Just people don't know about them. Some people do and some people don't. And as my um, colleague said, Anna, she said zero escaping. That would save a lot of water. We just need to have people know about it. Oh, and you said a site. And a site isn't a source. Do you have any, like, interviews? It's epa.gov. I said cited from epa.gov. Do you have any interviews from actual people who've been talking about this I kind said epa.gov. You don't need to have interviews to have it be a reliable source. Um, I just cited from the source. Um, how much do these new toilets and faucets and other appliances cost? Uh, they cost very little. The faucets cost right around 10 to $20. And honestly, to save, how much was it? I think 3,000 gallons. It's honestly not that much. Just 10 to $20. That's just your Five. average faucet. Summary rebuttal for speaker team A. Can we take um, 30 seconds prep time? Okay, time's up. Summary rebuttal, first speaker, team A, one minute. All of these programs that we are implementing are working. We have restrictions in California that are being put in place right now. They are working and they are conserving acres of water. We are uh, conserving waters and levels, water levels haven't been this low since 1965 to 1970. We have improved and even today we continue to improve. 
We are using these programs, they are working, and we have improved our water levels. They continue to improve, and they are projected to continue to improve even further. With all of these happening, well, with all of these things happening and people becoming more aware of the water they're wasting every day with just their faucets, I believe that our water is safe. Thank you. Summary rebuttal, first speaker, Team B, one minute. In summary, to cover our main points, we are overusing our water, we are directing too much to ag agricultural purposes, and water development patterns pose serious ecological and social negative impacts in, on, our, on the United States. Thank you so much for your time. Summary rebuttal, second speaker, Team A, one minute. Hi again. As I've said, the United States, our practices are pretty good right now, I would say. We have WaterSense, a program which takes products that everybody uses, and they find a way to make it 20% more water efficient without losing any water, without using, losing any productivity, product performance, really. It just works exactly the same. It's just more water efficient. And ever since 2005 to 2010, the amount of water was, the amount of water used was 13% less. There are a lot more that have gone down for five years. Imagine what we could do in the next five, in the next five, in the next five. Soon we'll be doing pretty good. Thank you for your time. Summary rebuttal, second speaker, Team B. One minute. In summary, there is a huge variety of things we can do to secure a future of water. And there's a huge variety of things that we are doing that we could get rid of to secure the future. There's many things we could do to secure, to secure a future for the U.S. We must secure our water. Thank you. Can we have one more 30 seconds of time? Time's up. Now we have a grand crossfire, all six students, two minutes. Third speaker, um, um, I wanted to ask, you, my partner here asked you and you didn't answer, how much is an average family? Um, four people. Um, we found that actually instead of 300 gallons, it's actually 400 gallons per day, a family of four. What's your source for that? My source for that is the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, you said, um, second speaker, that soon we'll be doing pretty good. I thought you were saying that we were already doing good. I'm saying that we're doing good. I, I said that we're doing good. I mean that we're going to do better and better and better. The thing is, right now we're doing a great job, but we can only get better. Um, you said, what's your name again? Sorry. Kylie. Okay, Kylie. Um, you said that we're projecting too much water to the agricultural. Yes. How much water is that? Because, I mean, I think it's pretty important for us to give water to our food sources. It is, but since 1950, it's tripled in volume how much we are giving our water. Actually, since 1965, it's gone down. But since... How much water? What's your are you source for that? Uh, USGS. How much Which stands water for? Are you United States Geological Survey. And when they say survey, they mean survey of the land, not of people. Uh, um, you second speaker, you said that we could do things to improve our water. What could we do that we're not doing right now to improve it? We could get rid of like agricultural use. Like, are you saying that we should get rid of our food? No, I'm saying that we could use recycled water for that. We already do. Desaltation, desaltation. Desalination? Yes, I can. That's toxic water. We can't do enough. Where does the salt go when we desalinate it? We take out the minerals and salt of that water. Where does it go after? I do not know that. 
Um, and first speaker, you keep talking about um, some sort of negative impacts. Impacts. What did you say those were on? Uh, ecological impacts and social impacts. What are those? What exactly is happening that's negative? Um, to, uh, they have caused severe damage to freshwater ecosystems. Uh, what are those times impacts? Up. Final focus, third speaker. Um, can we take one minute prep time? Okay, time's up. Final focus, third speaker, Team A, one minute. As my colleagues have stated, we're doing a great job of conserving water, and all we can do possibly is just continue as we, if we continue using what we're using now, we'll just continue to get better and better, and we'll save more and more water, and we're just going to continue with these products and these things, and we're just going to save more and more water. So I don't really see a negative impact of this. If we just continue saving more and more water, how's that going to negatively impact us? All we have to do, we already have the programs. The problem is not a whole lot of people know about them. Just like the common folks, we need to educate them. We need to say, hey, here's something that works. It's proven to work. Xeriscaping, it works well. We could save 60 billion gallons of water a day or a year just by doing certain small things like changing a faucet or changing your toilet. All you have to do is just change those little tiny things. Change your lawn. It's not that hard. We just have to make people more aware Time. of what we can do. Thank you. Final focus, third speaker, Team B, one minute. If our processes were already secure, why would we need to expand? And if we... And one faucet won't change the world. If we change out our toilets and we use more water, where's the other parts going to? Unnecessary things that could be used for greater things. And if we really were going to change this stuff earlier, we would have already cut down on the things that we thought were unnecessary. Like fracking isn't necessarily um, necessary. We could use um, other things to fuel cars and stuff. And as Leonardo da Vinci once said, water is the one driving force of all nature, so why slow it down? Okay, thank you both teams. We, the judges are going to um, deliberate and we'll be right back with you. Good job.
Okay. Teams, very good job. Um, I know you've worked hard on this for uh, over a month now preparing and your speeches were well done. We love that um, both teams had a lot of statistics um, and you both really seem to know a lot of details. And so we did make a couple of notes. It was a split decision. That's why we were back there so long. Um, but we did come to a, um, a decision. And so we wanna tell you, um, let's tell you some good things that we, we loved when we heard new statistics. Um, we do wanna recommend and keep recommending. I know it's hard um, for the people in the audience Public speaking is scary, and these are middle school kids that are doing it, and so we are just very proud of them for being up here. Um, kids, you can continue to work on your eye contact. Okay, that pulls us in. Um, we loved a lot of your summaries, and whenever we saw passion come out in you, like you really believed it, that meant a lot. Um, we liked when you're asking us questions and making us think, and overall, the summaries and rebuttals um, were, were pretty strong. And let's see. So we came up with the team um, that had, we thought their research was a little more solid. Um, we thought that their content was clearly and logically organized. Um, and the speakers contributed to the spontaneity of the debate, um, synthesizing response. And um, this side had um, very strong presentation skills, um, crisp and confident delivery. We do want it to be very civil. We saw a point where it wasn't as civil as we would like it to be, but overall, you did a great job. So we want to say all of you are winners because you made it this far. And our winner today is going to be East Naples Middle School, first place. <laughs> so we have <laughs> so we have trophies for um, the teams today and again thank you thank you for being students that actually choose to research on your own time and to get up and debate and we're just very proud of all of you so you thank you both teams you did a great job so Thank you, everybody in the audience, for your support. We appreciate it. Good job, kids. So.